which talks about non-technical approach and non-scientific approach that includes the humanistic approach, reconceptualist approach, school-based approach, and also the community-based approach. So what is the meaning of curriculum approaches? So when I say curriculum approaches, it is a way of dealing with curriculum, a way of doing, creating, designing, and thinking about the curriculum. A curriculum approach shows the viewpoints of curriculum development and design the role of the learners, the teachers, the curriculum specialists, in planning the curriculum. It is also includes the goals and objectives of the curriculum. That approach to curriculum reflects the person's view of the world, including what the person perceives as reality, the values them important, and the amount of the knowledge he or she possesses. When we say non-technical and non-scientific approach, it tends to challenge traditional theories and practices and reflects the more progressive views of education. It's often used when the major source of curriculum content is the needs and interests of students or needs of society and culture intended learning outcomes are not stated at the outset. So when we say that the non-technical and non-scientific approach, it is a simple word. It is a subjective, personal, static, heuristic, and transactional. It is also a stress on learner rather than output. It is also an emphasizing activity-oriented approach to learning. It also curriculum should evolve rather than precisely plan. So when we say non-technical or non-scientific approach, in a simpler words, it is subjective. For the most recognized non-technical and non-scientific approach, we have three models. So we have deliberation model, Alan Gladhorner naturalistic model, and also the post-positivist or post-modern models. Okay, so when we say deliberation model, it is a process of negotiation among those different points of view and value systems in order to find satisfying solution. That was been according to Vanity in the year 1987 in a page 93. So in short, that deliberation model, it considers the interrelatedness of reality. So it means it ends effect of each other that proceed from problems to proposals to solution that occurs within cultural context. Next, we have Alan Glatter naturalistic model. So when we say naturalistic model, it should the result in curriculum that is easier to implement and works well to the teacher's planning styles because it is more responsive to the political realities and moving from the larger to the smaller or either words can be more flexible or less rational. So we have eight steps of this model. We have first assess the alternatives, Stake out the territory, build a knowledge base, develop a constituency, block in the unit, plan equality learning experiences, develop the course examination, and last, develop the learning scenarios. There are at least as many philosophies as their philosophers, but the philosophical perspective currently dominating education. So, the post positivism in ontology is how we define truth. There exists an apprehensible, objective reality. While in postmodernism in ontology is how we define truth, it is a multiple realities or all equally valid. Truth does not equal fact. In a post positivism in epistemological as the way no truth, knowing is done is separate fossey for researcher and the subject. And for postmodernism, researcher and subject are inseparable. So it is really helpful to know something about what our society believes, about where assessment came from. So one of this is the post-positivism and the second one is the post-modernism. So let's proceed to the humanistic approach. So when I say humanistic approach, it emphasizes the personal worth of individual, the centrality of human values and creative, active nature of human beings, the approach is optimistic and focuses on the noble human capacity to overcome hardship, pain, and despair. So it focuses to the engages of social skills, feelings, intellect, artistic skills, practical skills, and more as part of their education. Second, we have the reconceptualist approach. So it is exploring the meaning of one's own religious life in relation to both those who share that life that those who so not. So that was been a 
recording to Scott in 1984, so the dialogue appreciates the value of other religions, philosophies, and cultures aiming to learn from and enrich one another. So in reconceptualist approach, for example, the teacher interacts with each student to discover the child's unique needs rather than simply employs his standardized practices. We have the school-based approach. So when we say school-based approach, it is an approach is often assumed to offer schools and teachers autonomy at the site level, thus enabling them to develop school-based curriculum and pedagogies to better fit the needs of students. This study purposes a cooperative platform that integrates the strengths and for the an actual intelligence of the school base, we have an initiative to maximize the support for curriculum development of the teacher, the school, and as well for the system levels. And we have the three stakeholders, the students, the parents, and the administrators. Next is we have the community-based approach. So it insists the people targeted for humanitarian assistance that have the right to participate in making decisions that affect their lives as well as a right of information and transparency from those responsible for providing assistance. So overall, the non-technical or non-scientific approach is focused on the process and personal relevance for the student, learner-centered and problem design. That's all, so here comes the references of our lesson. I hope that you have learned something new today about our lesson and that is non-technical or non-scientific approach.